Hey everyone, Chris here. Welcome back to our series on the Scratch-Built F4D Skyray. Now, in our last video, we actually, I revealed the whole project, flew it in primer, and as I mentioned in that video, this project started five plus years ago. And with the loss of the B58 Hustler, um, you know, I really, I really needed a win, and so I wanted to take that project that's been waiting in the wings, get it flying, and then go through the process of finishing it all up. So the airplane flies amazing. So getting it all flown, it was time to transition into the painting process. And so before we get into the paint aspect of this, I wanted to talk a little bit about the scratch build and how we approach all that. Now this was a collaboration with my friend Hex Speed, and it really kind of started with a phone call. Yo B, what's up? I'll be in town, so... Sky rays? Sky rays! Sky rays! And so with much excitement, we went and dove headfirst into it. I have a huge library of resources for the Sky Ray. I took a design that I had, scaled that up, got the size that we wanted based on the inlet requirements to match the 80 millimeter fan that we were using. It's mostly built out of six millimeter Depron. We pretty much started with the side and top profiles and built from there. I designed and 3D printed inlets, a nose cone, so that simplified those aspects of it and we got a really clean inlet system so it's nice and efficient. The rest of it comes from understanding where the stress points are gonna be, understanding the shape of the airplane. Also, I had some cross sections available based on the fiberglass kit that I had designed years ago. Once we had it all shaped up, the airframes were fiberglassed, they were primered, cleaned up. And so my friend Hex Speed, he got his done shortly after starting ours and mine had been sitting for quite a while. And so I just wanted to mention the process because I've had guys ask about plans and stuff. There wasn't really a plan. We just did it as we went. And so with that being said, let's get into the paint aspect of this project. We are painting this up as a VF13 Sky Ray. This is a paint scheme that I've admired for a really long time and I've wanted to model for a really long time. So I'm excited to get into it. We're gonna start out first with doing some detailing work on the airframe first, cleaning up the primer, making sure it's all ready for paint. And then we're gonna get into the paint process. So let's go.
All right, so we have a fully painted sky right now. It's like a blank canvas that we're gonna apply all these markings and detailing to. There are a whole series of inlets and exhaust vents that are all over the Skyray airframe. Uh, and so I wanted to characterize all of those. And with this being Depron, it ended up being really easy to do because we use six millimeter Depron. I simply just plotted out the vents that I wanted. For example, the NACA inlets. I plotted that out uh, and then traced it onto the surface and then cut it with an X-Acto all the way through with the exception of the very front. So I just simply just pushed it down used some foam safe CA to secure it in place. And then that was pretty much it. I did some cleanup on there with some glazing putty uh, to try and seal up the foam and all of that. But otherwise that was how I tackled all of those exhaust vents and NACA inlets. Also, there are some very characteristic uh, louvered vents on there as well. So I cut all of the sides of each louver, except that I didn't cut all the way through in this case. I just scored into the Depron and then used a screwdriver to push the fronts down. So that simulated a really nice louvered look, which was all I was looking for. I didn't need any venting or anything of that sort. I just wanted it to look like a louvered exhaust. And so it really came out awesome in that respect. And then to finish up the detail work before paint, I had 3D printed some detail parts. Most notably, there's a small scoop inlet right next to the, the major inlets. I'd also gone through and designed a tail bumper and tail hook. And then also there are three, I'll call them wing fences, along the wing leading edge. And so I 3D printed those as well. I razor sawed into the leading edge and inserted them in and then just foam safe CA them in place. They're not actually traditional wing fences. They're actually there to help catch the net on the aircraft carrier in the event of an emergency. From there, it was on to the paintwork. And so I airbrushed the entire thing with the MRP brand or Mr. Paint it's called. And I airbrushed it over the entire airframe. And I have a fan tip that works beautifully for larger surfaces. And so I use that, but man, the white took so much paint to cover. If I could do it again, I would have done a, a white primer coat first and then sprayed the, the white down. And so with the gray, it, it covered a lot better because of the darker color. And so I didn't need nearly as much. To get the separation, the faded separation line along the nose, I used 3M soft edge masking tape. That gave me the rough line. And then I went through and put the, the regular tip back on the airbrush and then use that to give a really nice faded line. That's how I do all of my camouflage work, actually. One thing I do want to mention when I was touching up the separation line uh, with the gray and the white on the nose, I ended up getting a huge drip of gray on the white underside. The reason it happened is I didn't have the cap on. I had to fix that. And so to do it, I wiped off the paint, let it dry, and then I just wet sanded the area with 600 grit wet dry. And I went back and touched up the paint. Even if you're touching up small little things, just put the cap on to avoid any kind of disaster. But that stuff does happen. And so you just kind of work through it when it does. From here, it's time to get markings on. I'm gonna paint everything that I can on this. So yeah, let's get on to that. But before we do, I wanna mention this video is brought to you by Fictive. They are an online manufacturing company. So if you have a design that you need manufactured, especially out of metal or anything like that, they can do it for you. For me, I don't have a metal cutting capability here. I've got everything else, but I can't do metal. And so that gives the opportunity to send it out to them to get the parts manufactured. The process is simple. You upload your design, you get an instant quote right there, and they will ship it back to you as soon as it's done. I'm really excited to have teamed up with them on this because I can see a lot of benefit in the future from them. I've got a link down in the description where you can check them out.
All right, all of the paintwork is done now. Uh, I'm really happy with the results. You know, everything was painted except for one decal. It's all MRP paint. They spray really, really nicely. And I created all of my own markings, having laid it all out in CAD. I vinyl cut everything. So it is important to kind of burnish the edges down for the masks. Uh, otherwise you can get some slight bleeding. In those cases where I did have bleed through, I just used post-it notes or some masking tape and to back mask and touch up any areas where that might've happened. Also for say the wing walks and some of the other areas, I used a vinyl fine line tape. But again, you wanna burnish the edges down. You wanna make sure you burnish any overlaps. So that way it seals in the corners. And I actually use a, a nail grooming tool to, to do that. But one of the things I really wanted to mention and dig deeper on is the small letter stenciling. That is all painted. And so there is a material that comes from Easy Screen Print. It is a silk screen. And so you create your markings in a program, it can be PowerPoint or whatever. And so they have a starter kit that provides the screen material, some transparency, a backboard that you use. And so what you do is you print that out on the transparency, you put it onto the material on their felt board, and then you expose it to the sun for a minute. And then you throw it in water. And what happens is the water dissolves the areas that were covered by the black markings. And as a result, you get a very, very fine uh, metal mesh that you can paint through. What I like about it is it provides a really cool stenciled look. Uh, and so it's a really, really cool technique to do small lettering like this. There's one decal on here. I was not able to get an effective mask for that ejection seat warning, but otherwise, you know, it took quite a few more hours than I had anticipated to paint everything, but that's kind of the nature of the beast. But I really wanted to paint everything because honestly, you can't beat the looks of painted markings. Uh, you can do vinyl and you can do all of that stuff, but paint just looks so much better and so much more authentic. But it is a process. It's also much more rewarding in the end too. All right, the airplane is painted now. Man, the result came out beautiful. From here, it is time to go on to panel lines and weathering. Uh, and I've got some special tricks in store because I'm planning to do some additional detailing, uh, including raised panels. I'm gonna do scribed panel lines since this is a fiberglass surface, both of which add additional realism to the airframe. And so until then, if you'd like to see the first flight's reveal video on this project, you can see that here. And until next time, I'll see you at the field.